guys you're welcome to today's episode and today i have a very 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 interesting person very phenomenal person man who wears many hats and his name is ronald shaw so um ron it's great to have you here today it's great to have you i'm so honored to have you here today thank you so much for inviting me on your show ninja how are you today I'm good. I'm good. It's actually hot over here. I don't know how the weather is there with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here in London, it's still still pretty much winter. So I envy uh, you at the moment. So. <laughs> please don't. Please don't. <laughs> so, um, the first question I have, first thing that you know came up to my mind when I read your bio was like, how did you get here? Right? You're an author. You're a speaker. You trader, you're you're a leader. Like I mean, how how did you get to this point? Because you know there are a lot of people out there who see people like you, and we all want to be like you, right? But then we we just don't know how how to get there, how to get where you are. So can you just tell me a little bit of how you got here? Yeah. So my journey began uh, quite a few years ago. And I was working in a cafe. Um, I, I'd already got a, a degree. Uh, I'd worked hard for my degree, but but I ended up just working in a cafe, doing a regular job. And I was making coffee each morning. And uh, I was in, in an environment where people would come in and be quite angry before their first coffee. They're a little bit rude sometimes. I don't think it was personal, but but it was a little bit of a tough environment. Um, uh, tough for my for my self esteem. Um, I already felt so quite low in self worth and with people shouting at me, I thought, you know, well, what is this? And at one moment, one morning, I woke up at around 3 a.m. as usual, got ready, and then I was just sat there on my sofa, my parents' sofa, and just thought, what am I doing? What am I doing in my life? Uh, and it was a really a low point. I thought, I'm a worthless, you know, I think of various things to say to myself. And then I thought something clicked and I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not worthless. You know, I, I might not be the grandest person in the world, but I'm, I'm not worthless. I, I've, got, I've got some value. Um, and so I went into work that day, but I thought, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to stick around in this. And so I started uh, the process of, of trying to find a professional job. Uh, a lot of my friends had professional jobs and I thought if they can do it, you know, even if they're a bit smarter than me, why, why, why can't I do it? So, so let me have a go. And I started applying and you know, it wasn't, I fell down a few times and I didn't get uh, there, initially, but I had the determination and I got my first job, my first opening. Uh, and that was it. Once I got into the first opening, it was a kind of a, an internship in a finance company. There, I just worked hard. I was very motivated. I didn't want to be in that cafe. I was very motivated. And I worked, I worked. Uh, I got a permanent position and then every couple of years worked towards a promotion. And... Um, I became became a trader in that company, uh, and that was great. It was really, really amazing to do that, very high pressure, really fun. Uh, and that was the first of those titles. I, I became a trader there, and then okay. we'll talk about that as we go along. Uh, but then over a few years, I then thought, you know, I, this is great. I'm leading a team of traders, but where, where can I, how can I make a bigger impact? And I thought, you know, I need, I need to move into a more leadership position. So I then started the next journey. I started studying for my some management exams and then applied for management positions, moved into management, then could have a bigger impact. And that was great for a couple of years. And then I thought, okay, this is great. How can I have an even bigger impact? Uh, and then I started my speaking career. Uh, I started okay. speaking, started doing various podcasts and speaking on stage. And then I thought, how can I have an even bigger impact? And then I, I wrote my book. So at each stage, it thought, how can, I, how can I move up the next step? How can I move to a bigger impact? And whatever came, uh, that was how I took the next step. Wow. That's very interesting. So it, it, you got to, um, it, it seems as if you got to your lowest point. And, mm. you know, you, you got to a point where you were no longer comfortable at the zone yeah. that you were in. And then you decided to change. You decided to change. And then from it's, you know, once you, you know, came out of that comfort zone, you started moving from a stage to the other. To the, and then that's how you got here. I really, I really love your story. I really love your story. And, you know, your book, I have so many questions about, you know, 
your book, right? And I mean, how did you come to the point where you decided that writing a book about financial success and spiritual awakening, you know, all in one book, how did you decide that, okay, this was something you wanted to share? This was a story you wanted to tell, like, the world? Yeah, absolutely. So, again, early in my career, I these two worlds, uh, spiritual and uh, kind of success, uh, in, in a traditional sense, they've always been part of my, my life. That, that, that's, that's always been there. But what okay. I found in my early in my career is that both worlds didn't necessarily want to know about each other. So, so when I was in, my, in, in this financial institution that I was working in, um, I saw when people talk about something a little bit alternative or a little bit spiritual, um, yeah. people would not, not be very polite to them and, and, you know, just like, you know, come on. Or, or, or they'd be okay, but then they say something behind the back. And I thought, you know, this, I, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want people to talk about me behind my back. So I just didn't mention, I didn't mention my spiritual stuff in the, the finance job. And actually, it was the same on the other side. In the spiritual thing, when I talked about, you know, this, this kind of finance world, oh, yeah, you know, these are the people who are ruining the world. But, and, and you get that. So you get the opposite. The, the <laughs> love of money, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you get that kind of uh, contrast where both sides think that the other side is, is kind of wrong, let's say. So I, I learned to just initially keep quiet in, in both worlds. I, you know, if I was in a spiritual environment, I'd be spiritual. If I'm in the financial environment, I, I would talk about uh, ambition and, and, and money. But, but, as, but, but these were not separate in me. So, so as I got older, um, I started just being more free with it. And I thought, you know, uh, as my internal resilience grew, I thought if somebody says something negative to me, I, I don't, I don't, I'm going to take it. I don't care. This is me. Um, but actually, it wasn't until I started working with other people and finding that while I coached them, while I worked with them, that as they improved their uh, skills in their business skills, in their trading, that actually uh, automatically, if they already had a bit of a spiritual kind of inclination, that would start to naturally come, become part of it. And then that's, that's what I talk about in the book, this, this kind of the fact that they can be together. And when I saw that in several people, not just me, then I realized this is not, this is not random, this is possible. So for people who do want to combine both, they want to be successful on the outside, but also have that inner peace, the inner tranquility of, of the spiritual practice, it's absolutely possible. Um, in fact, I find that they actually can work together. If they're done in the right way, they can move together. So once I, I realized that, gosh, this is a book that I would have liked to have had 15 years ago, then I thought I, I want to give this to, to whoever else can, can benefit from this. Yeah. So what you're saying is that one can't exist without the other. Right. Uh, um, well, yeah, so, so it's possible to, to put them together and move in the in the right direction so i mean people do cut them off people have different ways of, of dealing with these separations that's that's I, you know I, I, people have what they have i, I don't, don't judge but for me i think it's such a, a waste or such a, a shame to not combine the two and have them moving in the same direction so for me uh yeah for me they couldn't exist without each other uh, in myself and i'm sure that's true for many people as well yeah oh, that's very interesting okay so i i have one of topic question right and especially from your book right so um how or why do people actually find trouble achieving financial success while trading like why i mean it, it can is it possible and why <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean that's, that's fair enough so so um uh, so so chris chris is a uh, a client of mine. Oh, sorry, I, I don't just say I'm not using people's real names here, just just for private okay. confidentiality. But but Chris, uh, so he, he's he's from Ireland, uh, but he's working. He's in Australia at the moment. Uh, he's, he's building a family in Australia, mm -hmm. and he wants to create financial independence for himself, uh, and especially through his trading. So he, he came to me, and I, and I asked him, you know, so so what's what's uh, why have you come to me, Chris? Uh, you know what, what's going on. He says, "You know, I, I really want to be a trader, but but I, I'm not, I'm just not getting it." And he says, "Like he, he used to study a lot around trading about how financial markets work, about how economics mm -hmm. works, mm -hmm. how trading patterns work." And for a, about six months a year, it, it was fine. It was it was great. But then what started happening is he started realizing that he would have a plan, but he wouldn't stick to his plan. Uh, he would get scared. He would have some sort of fear come up, and he 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 would just start almost sabotaging his trades or messing up or just not doing the right thing. 
So even though his trades were okay, he himself would actually undermine his trades. So he came to me saying, look, um, this is very strange. What, what was going on here? Um, and then we talked about it and we talked about how mindsets, how psychology is, is really important. And so I think it is absolutely possible to get financial success with trading, but it's not just about your book knowledge. It's about your sort of mental discipline, about working with your psychology. And so with Chris now, he's, he's back on track. He's, he's, he's making good money with his trades. He can look after his family as he wants to. Um, so I think it is absolutely possible. It requires work with your uh, education, but it also works, requires work on your mind. Okay. So in other words, you're trying to say that there is a connection between you know, trading and financial success and spiritual growth. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so the way I, I, the way I help traders, absolutely there is. So, mm -hmm. um, often what would happen is somebody will come to me for for help. We will work on their mindset, um, and uh, I think I'll, I'll give you some examples. I guess later in the conversation of, of how we do. Yeah. But, we work on the mindset and then what happens is the trading starts to improve. But then as we keep on working on the mindset, um, which often uh, leads to going past your fears, uh, what starts to happen is as well as getting better at trading, they start to find that they start to have inner peace, a spiritual growth. Um, and actually, the better they get as a trader, the better they get control of their emotions, the better they get in terms of their actual uh spiritual growth as well so people who come to me have no interest in the spiritual side they just want to get better at trading but actually they find the more work we do the better their spirituality goes so it's like at the beginning it's a side benefit and then they realize actually they are absolutely intrinsically linked no oh, that's great so mindset inner peace spiritual growth they all work hand in hand towards mm -hmm. you know achieving financial success that's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful and important to take note of Okay, so I wanted to, um, you know, when you said, well, the, the last thing you said, how, how, are there steps, how can you improve, you know, trading and getting closer to, you know, wisdom and, you know, inner peace and are there, are there steps one has to pull, are there defined steps, are there things that if one doesn't go through, then, you know, it's going to be fatal and you just... You're just wasting your time. Uh, yes, yeah, so there are there are the process I kind of lay out in the book. Uh, there, are, okay. I have a sort of simple, very simple five step process that I take people through, and the intention there is to find out what is what is actually blocking you from from moving on with your trading. So uh, one of my clients, Jo, she she came to me and she she was um, asking me, you know, I do something strange. I, I she was a good trader, actually. She was a very good trader. She had a nice, clear way of trading. Uh, she had a, a good pattern that she would follow. She knows how that pattern works. Mm -hmm. But what would happen is as she gets towards the end of the month, if she hasn't made the money that she wanted to make that month, then she would start seeing this pattern all over the place. She'd go, oh, there's the pattern. There's the pattern. Uh, and then she'd trade based on that. She'd lose money. And then when she, at the end of the month, looks back, she's like, that, that pattern wasn't there. So her mind is playing tricks on her. She was seeing this pattern. And we we're like, well, why, why is this happening? And we went through these five steps. And what we found was that she had this very strong fear of failure. So what would happen is as she came towards the end of the month, her head would be going, I'm not going to make my, my target. That means I'm a failure. And so I've got to desperately find this pattern. And so it would start making her see patterns where there weren't any patterns. It was a very sort of uh, interesting thing. So uh, because we saw that there was a strong fear of failure, we then uh, could open it up, we could clear it out. And then as a result, when she then went through the month, she was much more clear in her head. She wasn't scared, scared of failing. Uh, she would just be working in a nice systematic way. And her, actually her trading improved, she, she made more money. But the thing was, as well as that, you can imagine if you can handle your, your fear of failure, if you, if you turn it into something uh, that doesn't affect you, it affected so much more of her life. So uh, she, has a, she had a side business, that started to improve because she wasn't worried about failure there so she'd be more clear her relationship with her husband started to improve and you can see that although she came to to, to this process for trading uh her inner peace was improving and so all lots of areas of her life were improving so so we started with trading 
but actually we got to a much more of an inner peace and a, and a spiritual growth. Oh, that's, that's very interesting. Your book, The Traders Path to Inner Wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned these five steps are actually outlined and explained right in that book, right? Can you like give me more instant or more insights and you know what the book is about, what people expect if someone is interested in getting this book, what people expect to you know achieve after reading this book? Yeah. So 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 um this book is, is a uh it's a pretty concise book and what it does is it's really focused on making you a better trader. It has a has a framework that I lay out in there where you have essentially three three components. Your your you've got your goal, you've got your um your skills, and then you've got your what I call mental robustness. So what we're doing is we're looking to use these three areas, this triad, to move you forward and to make you a better trader. Excuse me, I think the sneeze. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, didn't, didn't sneeze. So 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 we, we have this triad, which is the goal, the skills, and the mental robustness. And for each of those, I lay out some practical steps that you can take for improving on each of these. And they're very, very simple steps. They've taken uh, a while to get to. I, I've, I'm trained in uh, literally sort of hundreds of techniques uh, and I, I'm sort of qualified in all sorts of coaching things. But I, I found that this framework was really core to, to how to, to become a better trader. Now, the, the five steps that I, I mentioned, that's, that's very much in the mental robustness section. And that's mm -hmm. something that you do over and over again. So it's not, it's not something that you will just read the book once and that's it. You'll read the book once or twice to learn the steps, and then you just repeat them over and over again. Um, and they're, they're pretty straightforward. They're basically about creating awareness of what's going on inside you in a, in a systematic way. Um, but that's essentially what, what we're doing. So as I, as I said with this, this lady, um, Jo, so at first we went through these five steps and we discovered that she had this fear of failure. And actually, we then reused the five steps again, and we realized this fear of failure came from some interaction she had with her mother when she was very young. Um, mm -hmm. And then just being aware of that, we didn't have to do any therapy, we didn't have to do anything that deep. Just being aware of that made her realize, look, what my mom said to me when I was seven years old isn't really that important for me trading right now. So just mm -hmm. her awareness of that allowed her to become a much more confident, uh, clearer trader. Yeah, so this book is more like a daily guide. It's not just something mm -hmm. you read once and then it sounds okay. I, I've read that book, mm -hmm. right? Oh, so um, the goals, the skills, and the mental robustness. Those mm -hmm. are things that you mentioned in the book and you explained, um, you know, well, right, in the book. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me how this um three things? I don't know if there are more that you mentioned in the book. How the street things would um, impact people's lives? I mean, wholesomely. Yeah. So, um, all, all three of them are, are very important. What what I find is the goal setting uh, is really needs to be done uh, at the beginning. And and this 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 uh, um, person Chris who's uh, I said it came, came to me. He was all over the place. He didn't know what he was doing. Um, actually, the most impactful thing we did with him um, was the goal setting. Once we did a good version of goal setting, that cleared up a lot. Now, what I mean by goal setting in particular is that you want to really know not just, okay, I want to make a lot of money or uh, or, or I want to get to this level of trading skill or whatever. That's, that's all fine. That's all very good. But most people are not actually motivated by that. So you have a lot of business books will talk about smart goals. Absolutely fine. No, no problem. So smart goals, uh, I'm sure most people know, but just a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Um, these, these are the goals that most business books talk about uh, and some self-development books. That's fine. Uh, but what I find is nobody is actually deeply motivated by a smart goal. Nobody goes, oh, I really want to get uh, a sharp ratio of 1.2 on my trading. No, nobody gets excited by that. Um, so what we need to do is go deeper. What, what, what really is behind the goal? What is the emotion behind the goal? What do you actually want to achieve for yourself behind the goal? 
And that's what I mean by goal setting. That's what we really go into when we do our goal setting. So with Chris, that's what I, I did. I initially worked with him on that. And that created so much success. And then we did the other steps, but that for him was, was really critical. Uh, mm -hmm. Skills. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Please. Yeah, I wanted to ask if all of this, are in, you know, are they all in this book? Or do people yeah. need to get to you one-on-one -on -one to have this? Because I, it seems like <laughs> I'd really like to get to know you, you know, to go through all of the book, all of this inside this book. Yeah, so so um, everything's in the book. In the book, I don't. There's there's nothing there. I haven't got like some some stuff that I do extra on the side. Of course, I've been okay. doing this with thousands of people. So, okay. uh, like any skill, when you've done it with thousands of people, there's a, a finesse to it. There's a, a way of doing it. If you mm -hmm. go through it, the book. Uh, you can go through it, you can do it yourself or do it with a friend, uh, a mm -hmm. fellow trader, absolutely fine. And that was the intention to get a bigger reach for people who maybe can't get access to me, they can still access these techniques. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, uh, if you want to get it done more efficiently at a, at a deeper level, then obviously talk to somebody who's, who's well practiced in this. But absolutely, the book has everything there, which I'm talking about here. Yes, you tell me about the skills. You talked about the goals. You talked about the mental robustness. Tell me about the skills. Yeah, so skill, I mean, skills is, is usually what uh, people talk about when they when they go to um, to a training course. Trading. So, so um, uh, when when we go to, uh, I, I've got a, my, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, a client of mine, Greg. So Greg, uh, he came to me and. Uh, he was actually creating me because somebody told him to come to me. He, he was like, I don't want to go to a psychologist. But he said, okay, I'll, I'll go to speak to, to Ron. And what happens is that uh, most books tra on trading say, oh, trading is 90% psychology, 10% skill. And then they teach 90% skill and 10% psychology. So uh, skill is well, well catered for in the market. There's loads of books on skill. What, what I do in this book is I give a little bit about how to approach your skill. Skill, uh, I don't talk about uh, trading strategies in this book. That's that's uh, well catered for elsewhere, and that's not, not what I want to do here. Yeah, I think it's but, everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. You yeah, need yeah, to get the skill, so right? Yeah, there's so much advice. Uh, if, if anything, there's too much advice. So, so if you, but what I find, to step, step back to the goals part, if you have your goals clear, it's so much easier to filter through all these thousands and thousands of videos that are telling you what to do. If you have your goals really clear, you start to realize that many of them are not relevant for you and your style of trading. So, so really the goals thing can, can already start to improve your skills because it adds your focus. But, but the, the key thing with skills, I find, is um, presence or, or mindfulness. So the key is to actually be as present as you can when you're doing analysis, uh, before you do your trade, and when you're in the trade, to just be really present. Um, now, what does that mean? That means that your mind is quietened down, that all you're doing is it's just you and the information, or you and the trade, and nothing else. And that way, you can take in much more information. Uh, so, again, I talk about this in the book, but, but in any given moment, it's estimated that we receive 400 billion bits of information, 400 billion, but our minds can only take 2,000 bits of information. So that's a huge amount of information that we cannot process. Mm -hmm. So if, if we've also got in our mind some thoughts about this, some ideas about that, then that 2,000 starts to shrink even more. So by being present, by having a clear mind and just being focused, we can get the best information out of there. Um, and we don't have to uh, be crowded out with, with other information. So being present is the mindset to bring to the skills that you're you're learning in your trading course or in your trading books or in your YouTube videos. Yeah. So um, you talked about the psychology of trading, right? Needed to succeed. Mm -hmm. So does a book cover like psychology and every apart from the goals and the mental, like does a book cover all of those things that mm -hmm. people need to know before, like in, in order to successfully trade and be successful financially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so um, when people have come to me, often they have re read a lot of the books on psychology around it. But what we find is that there are books that are quite academic. They'll, they'll tell you what kind of psychology you need to have, what kind of psychology it doesn't work. Um, but they don't always have the practical steps. 
So how, how do you actually do this? What, what's the practicality? So with this book, what I wanted to do is make it very practical. Uh, it's very much, it has a little bit of theory and structure around it, but really it's about, okay, so how do I actually achieve this? What is the actual steps that I take to improve my psychology? So I've been really, really focused on actual action steps to take in this book. But so, so I, I would say that you, you don't need to read a, a thousand psychology books. You can, you can just use these processes and it will take you there. Of course, if you want to read them, please, please do. But, but uh, this is a quite an efficient way of getting there. Okay. That's beautiful. So um, next question, next, definitely next question. How do we start the journey of, you know, resolving? Because you, I think in your book, you talked about emotional blockages, right? Preventing mm. people from being successful while trading. So how do people start this journey of, you know, mm. resolving these so, issues? Yeah. So in that, in that um so in the triad, we've, we've talked about the, the goal setting, we talked about the skills, and now, mm -hmm. now we're really talking about the mental robustness mm -hmm. and how, how, do we, how do we do that. So the first step, uh, it's actually the first step of the five steps. The first step is about, it, it sounds really simple, but it, it adds massive value, is actually to be clear on what the problem is. Um, mm -hmm. So when, when I say this to people, sometimes, uh, so, so Fred Fred came to me and I said, okay, so so let's first step, let's, let's say what the problem is. And he said, oh, I know what the problem is. You know, I'm just not doing my training, but okay, that's, that's great. So let, let's start mapping it out. Um, and I would say actually literally map it out, draw, draw a diagram of what's going on. So we drew a diagram. So first Fred would uh, start doing his analysis. He was, he was actually a very good trader. He, he did a very good thorough analysis. Then he'd be being patiently waiting for the, uh, for the market to go as he wants it to go. And then uh, he would do something strange and then he wouldn't, execute the trade and then he'd miss out so hang on so so and then we looked at that again and we realized that there was a point where um he would start to look on discord uh, and on telegram and other people would be saying different things oh they don't, don't do this don't do that okay. and he would start to doubt himself so yeah. he didn't even realize this so he thought he knew what the problem was but actually just mapping it out actually allowed him to actually see much more detail so that was the first step. And just seeing that, it made me, he just realized, okay, so so obviously the specific problem is not I'm messing up my trades, it's why am I listening to all these other people? Um, uh, and so yeah. already we had reduced the, the size of the problem to, to much smaller. So, so that's really the first step. The first step is to be clear on what it is. And if you are somebody who's a little bit visual like me, then just draw, draw a diagram of the steps that you take and what, where does the problem actually occur? Um, if you're not like that, that's fine. You can talk it out to a friend. You can and can do whatever you can you want to do to articulate it. But really, be very clear on what the problem is. That really is the first step. Very simple, but actually very powerful. Yeah, it is. So um, I know you really talked about not saying so much about the skills because I mean there's so much information out there. But can you tell us, you know, certain skills that you feel were really necessary that you had to put it in the book? and that you knew that it would you know help um traders out there beginners or even intermediate traders grow like what's what do you think are those maybe mention two three skills that you think are very very important if one is going to grow successfully as a trader yeah so, so um okay so first of all i've got to distinguish between uh institutional traders the traders who work in banks uh, and okay. personal traders, retail traders. Um, yeah. So traders who work in banks, they will often be within a framework that their bank believes in. They'll have an approach that they need to uh, uh, go with the bank, uh, and that will be usually quite a quite a, uh, a detailed approach. Um, so for retail traders, for, for people who are trading on their on their own account, mm -hmm. um, what I would say is uh, first thing that most people do is technical. Uh, skills so the technical in trading technicals uh anyone who's a trader will, will, will know that technicals mean that the pattern the charts that there um and that really is something you, you need to do as a retail trader it's just how how, how the world works and, and most trading platforms have lots of tools to use technicals so learning how to use them learning how to uh, uh read charts is very important um, and what you find is that charts are very rarely as neat as they are in the book. So in the book, you get like, oh, here's a nice pattern, here's a head and shoulders, very nice and clean. And then when you actually see it in real life, 
it's a mess. You can't really see. And actually, that's the point where, again, I tell you, psychology, the presence is very important. By being present, you can be much clearer on whether the pattern is really a pattern or whether it's your head playing tricks on you and you're seeing things you want to see. But, but technical skills are there. They can be found. There's loads of YouTube videos. Uh, Udemy has some great courses. Um, book, there's some yeah. books. Or you can do, if, you, if you've got a, a bit more money to invest, you can go into a formal course. But there's lots of information around trade, uh, trading technicals. The next thing is then um, ar around economics. So uh, understanding at least basic economics. Uh, so okay. understanding how, uh, how how markets work, how the economy, the state of the economy will affect uh, whichever market you're trading, uh, how different uh, political actions might affect your uh, trading. You know, you don't, it depends on your trading style. You don't have to go deep into your economics, uh, but you need to understand basically how, how it works. Otherwise, um, you might be there looking at the technicals and some big economic thing has happened, which is affecting the whole market and the technicals become irrelevant. And if you don't know okay. how, how economics works, then that could that could uh, come, come inside. And then the third thing I, I would say um, uh, is actually balance sheets, is looking at accounts. Now, this is this is getting maybe a bit boring for some people, but, but, but looking at accounts can be good. Even if you're not trading stocks, even if you're trading uh currencies even if you're trading commodities uh, just having a general understanding of financial accounts how the balance sheet works how the profit and loss works again it allows you to think of the flows of, of money within a organization and it allows you to understand how the finances of different entities can work so in order i'd say those are the three um uh, and again they might sound a bit you don't, you don't have to go to I, I i'm deeply trained in, in all of these uh you know yeah. I've got degrees in all of this stuff but but you don't need that you don't need that you, you but you do need some level of it it's not a case of all or nothing you can get at least some understanding of it um okay. and what, what yeah and, and then at some point you combine that with the psychology and, and you start to get better at your trading Okay, so all of this I mean you, you've been saying a whole lot of things and I feel like for newbies, it might be overwhelming for them, right? So I feel like, what one, what's one piece of advice, right? Do you think, you know, I mean, <laughs> you've been saying a lot of things. So what, what's one piece of advice would you give to anyone starting, someone who is already um, trading, but then finding it difficult to, you know, be successful doing it? Like, what's one piece of, of advice would you give to people struggling? Sure, absolutely. So, so the core is actually uh, out of all the things that I said, uh, the goal, the goal setting, I would say, is really, really critical. Uh, and I say that's actually beyond just trading. I think whenever you you enter a career, a business, anything, this goal setting is really vital. It, it, it not only allows you to be very clear about where you're going. If it's done in the right way, it gets you very motivated. Uh, especially when there are times we we all have our ups and downs. When those times when you're you're like, I'm exhausted or I can't be bothered or this is too hard. Having a good, cl uh, uh, clear, core, motivated goal will be something that can pull you through. And at the same time, if it's really nice and clear, it will allow you to filter through lots and lots of information. You know, the, the, modern, the modern problem is too much information. Uh, and mm -hmm. to have a good, clear goal will allow you to go, you know what, there's a load of stuff out there, but this smaller subset of what's going on is actually what I need. So really get, getting clear on your goals, getting clear on why it is that you're doing what you want to do. That really is the, the critical step, I'd say, for a beginner or, or actually an experienced trader. Guys, you've heard it. Goal setting is very, very, very important in all of this. I mean, I think it's actually important if people are going to like, if we are going to move on to the next step, right? Even in life, right? So I think um, we are very, very honored to have you here. I'm very happy. I really, really, really enjoyed everything you said. And I mean, you've been saying so much um, wisdom, right? So I want to thank you especially for being here with us. It's an honor. And I hope you'd be able to come next time. I hope you'll be able to grace us with your presence next time so <laughs> well, thank, thank you yeah. very much for this has been a wonderful conversation i really i really hope that uh, your your fans your listeners out there can can grab at least one or two bits of useful information throughout this It'd be really yeah. good.
so when are you going to launch the book? Is the book has been has the book been launched? Uh, it was recently published on on Amazon, so it's available okay. on on Amazon uh, in ebook form at the moment. So yeah, please please do go ahead and get it if you. If that's okay. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to put the link on the description, and so anyone who's interested in getting to know and seeing the book is going to um just click and move, you know, be able to access the book. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here with us. I'm really grateful. And um, I hope you come to see us next time. I hope you're able to, you know, spend time and, you know, serve this much wisdom. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. Be wonderful. Call.